Curious Cobb, and today we're talking about PVE damage gems in New World. So the big news at the moment is the expeditions are going to see a bit of an upgrade in the next patch, which is going to introduce mutations. And these mutations are going to be increasingly difficult versions of those expeditions with greater damage or new traits Sorry. on the mobs that will make it more challenging for us. And this is awesome, but it started to raise the question about how we as DPS can <laughs> optimize our gems. And that's what this video is going to be about today. GG's! <laughs> okay, so what's the problem we're trying to solve here? Is your damage on the left. Nice. Now I'm calling this the playstyle damage and that'll be clear as to why I'm doing that in a little minute. It's made up of first of all your base weapon damage and that's aligned to your weapon itself and that damage is typed. So if it's a spear it will be thrust, if it's a fire staff it will be fire etc etc. There are some buffs that are associated with your weapon which are based on a percentage of your weapon damage but there is a subset of those buffs which are based on your typed damage. So for example they will buff the specific thrust or um, fire as I say or strike or slash or whatever and there's also a buff that you'll get from putting a gem into the socket of your weapon uh, so for the high-end weapons this is very very common to have a socket in your weapon uh, and putting a gem in it will increase your damage and we call this the playstyle side because as we'll see in a minute there's a certain type of gem which based on your playstyle will give you a buff However, there's a different kind of gem that isn't about your playstyle, but is about the creatures that you're targeting. So if you were to swap that playstyle gem out for a creature specific gem, it may give you some damage advantages. And the question is how much of an advantage? Well, to figure this out, first of all, you have to state that your base weapon damage doesn't change, but what does happen is that it gets halved and that first half is converted to the magical elemental damage. So whilst the total is the same, half of that damage now has different buffs applied to it because it's no longer receiving the same typed damage buffs. So whilst the other buffs about your weapon damage, etc, etc, don't change, your typed damage does. In fact, your typed damage will halve and then hopefully get replaced with a buff because you're using a creature type damage uh, that is actually even more powerful against the creatures that you're targeting. But this is the real question now, when to choose to go for a creature specific buff over a playstyle buff is all about which of these particular numbers is bigger. So these are the gems we're talking about and as I say I talked about playstyle and what I mean by playstyle is that these are gems which under certain conditions will give you a buff and those conditions depending on how well you play that playstyle may be up all the time. But actually, in most cases, there's going to be some downtime for that particular buff. We've put Rally at the top there uh, is the diamond. And that's actually the default that we're going to use for this calculation. Because it makes sense that you could theorize playing a ranged character and always staying out of harm's way and never getting damaged. And those sorts of glass cannon builds, you know, they, they exist. It's very feasible. Um, it's very, very hard and you have to get very, very good at doing that. But it is potentially feasible that 100% of the time you can get 15% of the damage. Now, obviously, if you can only achieve that half of the time, then you're only going to get 7.5% damage. There are some of these that are better than others for different build types. And really, it's up to the individual to choose which one they want to do. And with these calculations, if you want to go back over them and replace, you know, the, the diamonds that we've used as the default here with something else, then you're more than welcome to do so. But we've picked that one because we think it makes sense that that one's going to be the most reliable version at 100% and you can always downgrade it if you need to. So it's a good starting point. The creature specific side, there are a bunch of them and there are four main ones that we're going to focus on. And again, as, as I mentioned before, this is about saying it's going to convert 50% of your damage into the particular elemental type. And it does also do some weapon scaling based off intelligence or focus, depending on which one you choose. We're not going to focus on that one just yet today, but we're just going to focus on that elemental change and see if that's actually beneficial. Uh, we will touch on the attribute points a little bit later because of some of the, um, the attribute perks that they give, but actually we're not going to focus on the actual uh, weapon scaling specifically because it's a slightly different topic. Oh, there's also a Carnelian gem. Sorry, Tonks, we love you, but the, the, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't make sense to talk about you here. Um, so we're not going to talk about that one just yet. We're also going to probably rule out Jasper, Moonstone and Onyx from the playstyle side of things. Not because they're not potentially useful in certain situations, but just because as a damage dealer, if you're taking damage um, to cause Jasper to proc, or indeed if your health is continuously below 30%, you're probably doing something wrong. Um, and finally, with the Onyx side of things, you know, the idea of just getting damage uh, for the first hit on a full health target might be useful in certain very very unique situations but i doubt it's going to be useful for example in mutated expeditions which is kind of what we're focusing on with this calculation 
Similarly, we're not going to look at Amethyst and Aquamarine. Again, not because they couldn't be potentially useful, uh, for example, in converting to uh, some you know, non-negative state um, sort of buff, but just because there aren't really any creatures in the list that we're looking at right now uh, that are particularly vulnerable to these different damage types. So this is kind of nice because it just whittles down the options a little bit and makes it really clear that, you know, these eight that we've now got that aren't crossed out, these are the ones that we're really looking at to choose. And then they fall into these two categories. And basically the question is, which of these two categories do we want for the given situation? Okay, and bottom line up front, this is what the outcome is, and we'll break it down into the individual calculations as we move through. And you can see here that I've used playstyle to just say, you know, whichever playstyle gem you like probably is the better choice in these situations. And then in the case where it's the elemental ones, I've just added in the, uh, the, uh, the icon for you there. And there are some here that you would expect. Uh, so for example, you know, fire being ex particularly strong against angry earth probably doesn't need any gemming. That makes total sense. But there are some little subtle nuances as well, which starts to become clear as we work through the numbers. Now, this is slash damage. We'll start off here because uh, slash and strike are probably the most simple. And then it starts to get a little bit more interesting as we go further down. So very simply with slash damage, if you're playing against Angry Earth, so if you're in Genesis, for example, you want to just stay with your playstyle. And if you are against anything else, pretty much you should go with gemming out for a creature type specific gem. Now, you can also see here I've drawn a red box around the ones that are particularly weak. And you might even think about changing your weapon up entirely for when you go into a, an ancient uh, target situation. So, for example, if you wanted to go into Lazarus or something, you might consider using a weapon that isn't a slash weapon if you wanted to cause a little bit of extra damage there. Uh, having said that, 9% isn't a terrible buff, it's just that you have to come quite a long way from the negative creature damage modifier of minus 15% to even get there. So definitely worth considering doing that. At the very least, gem a topaz, um, but actually, ideally, have another weapon to do your damage if that's what you're intending to do. Very importantly here, I am assuming, as you can see here in the bottom left-hand corner, that there is uh, no intelligence applied to this build. We'll come on to exactly why that's the case uh, later on, uh, but it does sort of stand to reason that if you're playing a slash build, you probably haven't got intelligence uh, built in here. But there are some cool modifiers here that could really buff the creature type damage, uh, which we'll get into when we start talking about thrust and indeed the, the magic dealer and damage dealers as well. Strike damage. So you can see here that we've got a significant increase, in fact, uh, for ancients up to 38% by staying with your um, play style rather than switching to the creature gem. There's still good damage to be had on the creature gem, but actually it's a lot better to stay with your play style if you can really, really perfect it. Similarly with Lost, so if you're going out into uh, something like uh, the Foxal or something in Reek Water, then it's definitely worth uh, sticking with your, uh, your play style gem. The weakest being Corrupted, look for a Sapphire, or indeed just put away your Warhammer for that particular run makes a lot of sense. Now in this case, you can also see with Angry Earth, I've got these orange arrows that basically indicate that there is a really, really close matchup between the playstyle and the creature type gem. And frankly, it's dealer's choice with those. However, because we've gone for a really um, perfect example using Rally and 100% for the damage, uh, then it's really probably advisable to say, well, I doubt you're going to be at 100% health the entire time. So the fact that these are more or less the same kind of suggests you should go with the Ruby simply because that will be consistent and you can't be guaranteed that you'll be consistent with uh, with the, the Rally perk, especially since you're playing Strike, which probably means you're melee, which probably means you're going to get hit at least a couple of times during a fight. All right, now it starts to get really interesting because Thrust Damage has an extra perk, which is really, really interesting. So when you hit dexterity level 100, which is pretty much every thrust weapon is dexterity, by the way, you've got a an additional attribute perk at dexterity 100 that gives you an extra 5% thrust damage. And that 5% makes all the difference because you can see literally it just gets added onto these totals here. And of course it gets halved when it gets added into the creature type because that damage buff gets halved. Uh, but that extra 5% turns what is a, you know, a meager 9% damage into a reasonably respectable 12%. Now, obviously, that's just 3%. I'm not kidding myself or anything. Um, but, you know, you might argue that you could still get decent damage out of your thrust weapons uh, with that extra 5%, even when it's uh, blended down with the gems. What's really interesting, of course, is that Corrupted, uh, corrupted are um, a huge target for thrust damage, an extra 43%, and that extra 5% makes a massive difference even when you don't have a creature damage modifier because you're looking at 23% rather than 18 um, so significant buffs to be had there. 
So basically the story with Thrust is go with your play style until you start looking towards like Angry Earth and maybe Lost and then eh, I don't know you might get away with it for a little while but like yeah you should probably think about bringing another weapon along I think. Fire damage is absolutely insane. So now we're into the stage where we can assume that pretty much with all of these intelligence damage dealers you'll have an intelligence over 150 and in these situations you have two buffs. First one comes at intelligence 50, that's when you get the plus 10% magical attacks um, to both light and heavy attacks. And the second one comes in at 150 where you get an extra 15% elemental damage. Now both of those buffs apply to the creature type gem. Obviously they, they also apply to the playstyle gem in this case because it's magic damage too. Um, so when you start doing those maths this is where it starts to get really really complex but very very satisfying because what you'll find is that even when you gem, so even when you are on a minus 40% modifier against Ancient with the fire damage, and then you add a Topaz to your to your socket, even a fire staff can start to do really good damage against Ancients up to 22%, which is up there with the highest of some of the melee damage, which is excellent. When you really start doing the maths too, you've then got Corrupted and Lost, which are more or less break even, and that makes sense because you've got a zero creature modifier and you're basically just replacing one type of magic damage with another, so it makes sense that they cancel each other out. But the really, really interesting number is when you look at Angry Earth, is 73% modifier for fire damage, just playing your play style. Goodness gracious, please take a fire mage with you to Genesis, because they will just win that DPS race a hundred times fold. Moving on to Ice, so this is similar but just not quite as pronounced with the weakest one being Corrupted. Again, not too bad if you were just to gem in with a Sapphire, should be fine. Ancient and Angry Growth, more, more or less break even. Um, no point gemming for those in my opinion, I would just stay with a playstyle. And then when it comes to the Lost, uh, yeah, 58% modifier with Ice. Unfortunately, of course, Ice Gauntlet kind of loses out here because Lost doesn't have its own dungeon that's going to be in the mutated expeditions that we're aware of yet. However, you can do good work in Folksal, and hey, they may even bring one out at some point in the future anyway. Void damage, final one. Similar story to Ice, except now you've got much more utility in Lazarus because your strength is in Ancients. Your break even is on Corrupted and Angry Earth. Again, probably wouldn't recommend gemming with these particular ones. And then uh, Lost is where you're going to struggle. Uh, but again, not really a huge loss in that situation. <laughs> Uh, this is kind of a handy little graph when you're looking to do your composition for your different teams so you can kind of scan through and sort of see which ones are going to be your priorities. So if you want to build your DPS composition out, obviously you want to make sure you've got some uh, good support players in there too. So if you bring along a um, thrust uh, damage expert primarily just because they're going to provide a lot of rends, that's totally reasonable because it will buff up your extra damage. But if you're looking for your top flight who is going to be the person who is going to do all of the damage and that's their job is just damage 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 don't worry about crowd control just focus on damage well those are the people that are going to be in these short lists so if you're going to Lazarus and you're looking for your top flight damage dealer then they're going to be someone that's either wielding void ice or strike damage uh, corrupted thrust fire and void Angry Earth is always going to be fire but if you have to compromise then go for ice void or slash uh, and then finally against Lost, you really want to be looking for Ice or Fire to help you out there. And that's it. And so a few conclusions that we can draw from this. Number one, don't just blindly go gemming your creature-specific gems. Think about what your optimum playstyle is and think about if you can outplay it. Uh, the numbers are all there. You can do the calculations. You can figure out what you would get from the creature gem. And then just figure out whether or not that you can beat that by using one of the playstyle numbers. It is it is really that simple. We've used a very simple uh, calculation here using diamond and the 15% buff that you get from the rally perk at 100% of the uptime. But you can play tunes on that and you can really figure out whether there's optimizations to be had there or whether your playstyle actually beats it. Also make sure that your weapon type damage and your target creature combo uh, has around um, plus, you know, if, if you're looking at less than 10% damage in those cases, then, you know, think about bringing a different weapon. I mean, it's not, it's, it's not you know, completely out of the realms of possibility that you could have a second DPS weapon uh, that you could bring along with you to sort of say, okay, we're going into Genesis now, so I'll bring out the Fire Staff. Makes a lot of sense. 
And then if the playstyle and the creature specific difference is low, then I would suggest like, you know, if that difference is actually kind of not really comparable between the two, I would generally suggest going for the creature specific gem just because it's easier and you don't have to play a certain playstyle to a certain standard. However, then you've just got to factor into the cost of actually like, you know, re-rolling those gems and replacing them when you need to. Uh, can sometimes get a bit pricey, but by default, I would, I would default to the creature specific gems if you can, just for consistency. As I say, regemming is always going to be an option. Um, it will probably go up in cost um, when the mutated dungeons come out because people will be regemming all the time. However, it may be better, cheaper, uh, more advantageous for you rather than gemming to just go for different weapons, like have another weapon. And that way you can actually change the perks even more and go even more optimized. You can actually have like, you know, ancient pain on there and be doing an even more damage, which is really cool. So do bear that in mind and hopefully these numbers will help you determine which of the uh, routes would be best for you. And if there is any sense of running intelligence in your build, then give it a go because there is a good 25% of extra damage to be had there. So all of those strike and slash uh, models can still have the intelligence buff added to those creature specific gems if they really want to. There's just not a lot of sense running it in most of the strength based builds. Uh, but if you can, for example, in Dexterity has a lot of scope to include intelligence in there. For example, if you run Rapier Musket, uh, there's bags and bags of upside of having intelligence in there too, because not only does it scale with uh, the magic with the 25% buffs to the elemental damage, uh, but also it will scale your weapon because Rapier and Musket both key off intelligence as a secondary stat. So definitely worth thinking about running intelligence in your build if you can. And finally, most importantly, if you go into Genesis... Please, please, please bring a fire mage. I cannot stress this enough. Um, it's also worth bearing in mind and just mentioning similar to the previous point that fire damage is fire damage. So there are a lot of uh, skills and attributes, for example, powder burn in musket that also cause fire damage. So you can also start to think of other ways to introduce fire damage into your rotation for Genesis uh, or indeed any other types of damage uh, if you spot them in your builds. Phew, that was a complex one. Uh, leave a comment if you've got any ideas or suggestions for builds. Until next time, stay curious.